What is up guys? I'm Will and you're watching Northwest Aqua Hobby. In today's video I'm going to give you guys just kind of a quick update on the Anubius grow out farm and this tank has actually become quite the bioactive setup and that's going to be the focus for this video. I've got a number of creepy crawlies in this setup now so I just wanted to go over those with you guys and let you know what type of inhabitants I have in here and what they're doing for uh, benefiting this setup in particular. And if you've been following along, one of the first little creepy crawlies that I added into this setup is isopods. And I added them in here several months ago and they're actually reproducing and I'll try to get some nice photos for you guys so, that, so you can see them close up. Isopods are great for any terrarium for a number of reasons. First and foremost, they're detritivores, so they break down organic debris and consume that and convert that into a more bioavailable substance that the plants can use for energy. The other thing that they do that is, is great for plants in particular is they actually burrow into the substrate and aid in aerating the substrate and providing good oxygen and gas exchange to the roots of whatever plant it is that you're growing. And here in the center of the frame you can actually see a hole that has been dug out by the isopods and that just kind of highlights the example that they do provide great aeration to your roots. And you may recall about 25 days ago I added some alder leaves to this setup and as you can see those leaves are very well broken down now and those isopods have done a great job of doing just that. And by breaking those down, they are providing a nice nutrient source to all of my Nubius plants. So that's a quick update on the isopods. Let's go ahead and cover a couple more organisms real quick. A few weeks ago, I noticed that I had some gnats growing in this setup. So I thought, what the heck? Let's throw a spider in there. Um, and that spider can feed on those gnats. So I went through my house and my garage and I found this one spider, I believe it is a hobo spider, and I went ahead and added that to this setup. Uh, hobo spiders are typically considered a funnel web type spider. They will establish their web typically at, at or near the substrate level and they're gonna try and catch any kind of flying insect or uh, insect that travels around on the ground that they can get you know, stuck within their web. So here in the center of the frame, you can see this hobo spider that I added in. Um, definitely, I'm gonna try and keep my distance from him so I don't get a bite, but you know what? If I get a bite, I'll survive too, so that's all right. And I'll see if I can get some nice photos of the web that he's created. Uh, I find it to be pretty cool. And next up for this discussion, we have soil mites as well as springtails. And if you look right at the base of this Anubius leaf, uh, you should see what appears to be a springtail. Um, they're pretty difficult to discern the two between, you know, a soil mite and a springtail, but they serve roughly the same purpose. They are also detritivores, so you'll see them crawling around in the soil chewing on soil and breaking down that organic matter into more bioavailable substances for your plants to consume. These guys are pretty difficult to see, but if you stare right at the substrate here, I'm gonna go ahead and blow on the substrate, and it, with a little luck, you might see some of them cruising around, so pay real close attention here. You know, you may think that those soil mites and springtails really are only staying at the surface, but in reality, those guys are actually boring down into the soil a good, a fair ways. So that's really helping in oxygen exchange and breaking down of organic matter, just like the isopods. You see guys, in nature, all of these different organisms play very vital roles in the breakdown and cycling of nutrients such that your plants can take them up and grow very strong and healthy. So if you can bring and incorporate as many organisms as possible into your own setup, then you're going to bring health into your system and you're going to stimulate strong, healthy growth amongst your plants. 
So if you guys have terrariums or grow out farms like this, then I would strongly consider trying to go bioactive. Isopods are an easy way to get started on that path. All you need to do is go outside and flip over a few logs and you should be able to harvest some isopods for free and put them in your tank. And as long as you keep the soil nice and moist, I'd be willing to bet that they're going to reproduce just like they have in this tank. So that's really all I had for commentary in this video, but let's go ahead and see if I can't get some nice close-up shots for B-roll.